Hello YouTube, Wolfman of Unlockable Content here, Lewis Wolf. I just got back from seeing a cure for wellness, and I'm cured. I am cured. Oh, this movie. This movie. Oh, where do I begin? Uh, I'll begin this way. Uh, this is going to be as spoiler-free as possible, but I have to talk about how the movie kind of rises and falls with how serious it was trying to take itself and where it succeeds and where it fails. So I guess in that way, maybe you could find spoilers, but I'm not going to talk about anything story-wise, anything plot-wise, nothing revealing, so no spoilers that way. Uh, next, I love psychological movies. Anything like that, and I'm all behind it. I'm, I love horror movies, but sometimes I can be a bit of a bitch about them. <laughs> I won't lie. I hate jump scares. They're cheap and annoying, and you can see them coming a mile away. Um... And this movie has none of those. I mean, even when you think you... It actually is scarier because you're prepping yourself for the jump scare and it never comes. And it's really nice, actually. It's it's a good feeling to not have to deal with those nuisance jump scares. And it's fantastic. Um, so this movie... See it. Just flat out see it. I'm giving it... My rating right off the bat, I'm giving it a solid 8 out of 10. It does a fantastic job throughout of messing with your mind and playing with your psychology and your what you're thinking is happening and is this person crazy, are they not crazy, what's real, what isn't, and it just does such a fantastic job of that, but <laughs> you're seeing me break down laughing here. Where the movie falls apart is it takes itself too seriously. That's the only way I can think to describe it. It takes itself too seriously and it starts to derail because of it. But here's the thing. There's like, you know, I guess if you call it a bell curve or bell curve, you go the other way, but whatever the valley or the spectrum, however you want to look at it, any weird hand motion <laughs> you want to use, uh... For a serious movie, and for something silly, you know, when you're on the extreme ends, you're enjoying it. In the middle is where you can kind of start falling apart, because it's either too silly and you can't get with it, or it's too serious and trying to take itself too seriously and it's falling apart. This movie is usually on the good side of the serious spectrum. But at one point... <laughs> Two points, actually. It just shoots over to the silly side of the spectrum to the point where you can't even be upset with it for what it's doing. You just It just subverts itself into you enjoying it because of how silly it is. And it's astounding. And it's still trying to take itself seriously. At least that's how I felt it was doing it. It was still trying to take itself seriously. And that's why I still enjoy it. For however silly it got, it was it still managed to be enjoyable because it just shot that far over onto the other end of the spectrum. And the story was still engaging, and I was still really sucked in. Uh, I kind of saw where it was going pretty early on. I had assumptions that were made, and some of them were right, some of them were wrong, but still kind of close. And it still was all very enjoyable for me. And you know, my advice to you is that if you can prepare yourself for a little bit of silliness with this movie, you can end up enjoying it a lot. I saw a lot of people leaving the theater disappointed. And I can understand that. But... I actually really enjoyed this one. And, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of the YouTube reviewers, the movie reviewers. You know, Doug Walker is one of my biggest inspirations, the nostalgia critic. But another person, you know, call many shout-outs here, Doug Walker. <laughs> Shout it! <laughs> and now for uh, the person that I would actually really enjoy hearing their commentary on this because there was a lot of deep moments, a lot of very interesting edits that were made to clearly mirror moments in the story. And, again, there were aspects of it that were... I mean, the movie is shot beautifully. It looks spectacular. Um, 
Here's my mini shout-out. Shout it! For Brows Held High, Cal, uh, Kyle Calgren. Um, look up his videos. He does amazing analysis. I love everything he does. I've sat through so many of his reviews multiple, multiple times. Amazing work. I'll link to him in the description below. If you've never seen him, do yourself a favor and watch. I would be really curious to hear his analysis of this film. It's not a part of the mighty Criterion collection, as you'll soon learn his opinion of, but it's still there's still a lot of deep stuff in there that I would appreciate hearing what he has to say about it. He could probably say better what I'm thinking about these things. Sometimes I don't articulate myself very well, uh, but... You know, it's it's there. There's a lot of good stuff, a lot of good thought-provoking stuff in this movie. And I really think, again, like I said, my recommendation, if you can just prep yourself for a bit of silliness because this movie just takes itself a little too seriously at times, then you can leave really enjoying the story and really feeling like you had a good time watching this movie. So... I'm giving it a solid 8 out of 10. I really have to. I really feel I have to. So let me know what you think. If you saw it, if you plan to see it, let me know. You guys have a good night. Take care.